and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Graham here on Amateur Sports TV. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's edition of Coffee with Graham here on Amateur Sports TV. Today, we got a writer coming on the show. She's a hockey mom. She writes for juniorhockey.ca, and she also created Behind the Champ, another place where she writes about her experiences watching her son play hockey. It's a lot of fun to read her stuff. It's going to be awesome to get into the mind of a writer today, a mom as well. Michelle Anderson joining us on today's edition of Coffee with Graham. Michelle, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for asking. Yeah, no problem. And I know that I'm in Winnipeg, Manitoba right now, but reading off your website, I know that you're from Minnesota, so you're in the States right now. So it's cool getting to connect like this. I haven't connected with anyone so far away from where I live, so it's it's going to be a cool experience doing this today. But you're a hockey mom from Minnesota, you said, a hockey mom of 15 years. How has your life kind of changed after you've kind of been – thrown into this lifestyle of being a hockey mom, dealing with your kid playing hockey and stuff like that? Well, you know, actually hockey was the one sport I probably knew nothing about. And my son became obsessed with it when he was two. And I thought, well, he's two, it'll pass. Except it didn't. And I had to let him play. And when I saw how much fun he was having, I had to... I had to learn how to play too. I don't play very well. I never played very well, but I had an absolute blast. Um, so yeah, he's just kind of kept going and I've just kept on learning as I go. And it just, it's just such a beautiful sport. It's, I don't know how anyone can not love it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, playing and hockey and myself and growing and up is a, a great game, and it's a beautiful game, like you said. And I got to read your intro to a bit about yourself on juniorhockey.ca, and you said, even though you're not very good at it, you, like you said, you do find the beauty in the game, and I think that's awesome. So just how is the – I know that hockey is a sport that you knew nothing about but i'm sure hockey culture in minnesota is such a such a rich and deep culture for sure but how was it being immersed in that at the very start it was a lot of fun it hockey is just an instant family um wherever you go if you set foot into a hockey rink you know that everyone there has had a similar experience and you're going to connect with people and it's just been so much fun meeting people from all over the state and all over the country and all over the world as he's grown yeah, yeah. Sure. and just talking about how everyone around kind of builds that family culture and you said in uh the, the little write-up that you did on junior hockey.ca that you've learned a lot about the game from not only your son but parents as well so just from a writer's perspective how nice has it been to get the learning those experience from parents and just your son in general uh it's been it's been fun. Uh, I don't really know how to answer that one. I guess <laughs> the stream was cutting out a little bit. Okay. Well, we can go to our first commercial break. We'll figure it out. I can kind of hear myself come through on your lines, so we're gonna get this figured out. We're gonna go to our first commercial break here in this edition of Coffee with Graham. I'm joined by Michelle Anderson, writer for juniorhockey.ca and also the creator of Behind the Champ. We'll hear from our lovely sponsors here sponsoring today's edition of Coffee with Graham and we'll be right back with Michelle in just a moment.
Grand Forsyth back here on Coffee with Graham with Michelle Anderson, writer for juniorhockey.ca, as well as creator of Behind the Camp. And it's cool what Michelle's been able to do, really taking her experiences as a hockey mom and putting them on paper. You had to tell her experiences on juniorhockey.ca as well as Behind the Camp. But just talking about the hockey cult for Michelle in Minnesota and how it's like, how it's like family. And uh, I, I think that's, that's an awesome way of putting it as hockey. Once you're immersed in the culture, it is a pretty big family culture as well. And just being able to grow throughout the years, being able to experience these things, I'm sure that it made you excited about the sport and even made you decide to start writing about it as well. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So uh, what, what made you start writing exactly? Was it those experiences that you saw your son playing that made him look like he was having so much fun? Was it the family culture? Was it something else maybe? Um, I really didn't, I've always been a writer, but I haven't really, I didn't really start writing about hockey until he got to more the junior age. And I'm kind of a planner. I like to kind of know what's coming next. And I had a hard time finding a lot of information about junior hockey because it seems like it just kind of, there's so many different paths to take. And I wasn't really finding anything from a parent's perspective. And so I thought I would start writing that. Nice. And uh, is there a piece of writing that you've been most proud of so far that you've written? I know that you have a series on juniorhockey.ca called Notes from a Hockey Mall. I do. Um, probably the most popular piece so far has been about being a billet family. Um, that's probably been the most shared. Nice. nice. And I'm sure that the, the joy you get from it is just being able to write and get your words out on paper, you know, the experiences that you feel. But when you start to get recognition for pieces like this, I know the, the reason that I heard about you is my boss sent me a piece from behind the champ. And it was, if you're good enough, they'll find you. I think that was the name of the piece. But to get that recognition as a writer, I'm sure that there's some pride you take in that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone, you know, everyone just has that need to, to be recognized and to feel valued. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And the, the types of writing that you do on notes from a hockey mom. So it's a little series that you do. I know that all of the pieces start off with that, but is it more of a blog style of writing? Is it more of a column? What type of writing is it? Yeah, I try to keep it to five to six hundred words, not too much more. Um, of course, I have a lot more to say, um, but since my son is still playing hockey, I kind of want to wait um, just to not embarrass him too much. <laughs> wait until his hockey career is maybe over. Um, and then I I have plans to write my a more in-depth story in book form. Nice. nice. So uh, going to be after he's done his hockey career. That's something that's kind of in the works right now to be done in the the upcoming years or months. I've been working on it, but I want to wait until he's he's done because you know moms embarrass him. Even though that's kind of our jobs as parents to embarrass our children, um, but I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to mess with his hockey. He's yeah. got to drive that bus. Yeah, yeah. And for sure, he must be enjoying it because he is now playing at the junior level, as you said, which is awesome. How much joy does it bring you knowing that your son's been able to, you know, in a, a state where hockey is, it's competitive, especially at the high school level. I know in Minnesota, there's some fake tournaments that happen there. But for your son to keep improving throughout his career, finding a place playing junior hockey now, I'm sure that as a mom, sitting back and getting to watch him, finding the joy that he finds in the game and the successes that he's had, I'm sure that that gives you even more pride than anything. Yeah, and actually he's playing college hockey this year, um, excuse me, at Williston State in North Dakota. And 
you know, it's, uh, it's amazing to see him follow his dreams. I never, I never imagined that I would have a child who wanted to play hockey when I had him as a baby, but to see him pursue that dream absolutely relentlessly has been, has been really cool. I'm very, very proud of him. Awesome. And it's great words from mom being proud of her son who looks like he's done great things throughout his career. And like you said, being able to be at the college level, it's at Williston State. Is that the name you said? Well, yep. Willis, Williston State in North Dakota. Nice. So obviously not that far from home, obviously not in the state of Minnesota, but not that far from home. How has it been having to, you know, let him go from home? I know that you're probably a mom that likes to have him at home, likes to have him by, by his side, but I'm sure that you're excited for what this journey brings to him, him moving away from home. Uh, yeah, I actually got used to it a little bit with junior hockey uh, since he played, he's played in Milwaukee, he's played in Wyoming. Um, I miss him. I call him my human garbage disposal because he eats so much. So it's kind of nice to have him eating those leftovers for me along with everything else. But I also miss him because I'm not, <laughs> I don't tend to eat as well. I don't cook as much for myself when he's home. Um, but I know that those experiences will help him with life and it's worth more than the little bit of pain I feel because I miss him because he's not around. Yeah, yeah. more of a big picture stuff for sure. And I think that's a selfless quality to know that, you know, even though you do miss your son, it's you're okay with it because you are okay with him, you know, going to pursue his dreams in hockey and potentially making it even further in his career if it gets to that. But just talking about the book that you're, you know, you've been writing it. You said you want to wait until your son is done hockey player. Some of those experiences that maybe he's not to, you know, would be kind of embarrassed about. Are those going to be in the book? Is that going to be in the subject matter? Ever? <laughs> they might. Yeah. Probably. He no. won't know that. He doesn't know that yet. Well, he'll know it if I, if he sees this. But yeah. Yeah. But by then, I figure he'll be old enough. He won't care. Yeah, for sure. So it's kind of taking some of those little moments that maybe he might be embarrassed about, but it's telling that story from your perspective. And I think that those little things will go a long way in making the book what it's going to be. Is there anything that, you know, you're looking to change with the book moving forward, or are you pretty set on the, the, the outline of it right now? I think... I think it's pretty open-ended at this point to just kind of want to see where it goes and see what happens. Nice, nice, nice. Well, if you guys want to check out Michelle's work on junior hockey, you can go to the website down below. We linked it down below there. It's on the ticker, juniorhockey.ca. If you want to check out her work, there's a lot of great stuff on there, and it's from her series, Notes from a Hockey Mom. So, we're going to take our final commercial break in the show right now, Michelle. We're going to get back to you in just a moment. We're going to come back from the break and talk about what uh, what Behind the Champ is, your second source of writing, which I think is very cool. I got to check some of that out the other day preparing for this interview. But we'll be back with Michelle Anderson, writer on juniorhockey.ca and creator of Behind the Champ. And we'll get into Behind the Champ after the break. But first, we hear from our lovely sponsors here on this edition of Coffee with Graham with your host, Graham Forsythe. At Super 8 Winnipeg West, we have your comfort in mind with free Wi-Fi and free daily Superstart breakfast. We also have guest laundry facilities, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and a jetted hot tub. Sleep well in a spacious guest room equipped with plush new bedding, a 50-inch flat-screen HD TV, microwave, mini refrigerator, and Keurig coffee maker. Or book a suite with a kitchen, ideal for extended stays. Super 8 Winnipeg West, located just inside the perimeter on Portage Avenue. 
And Graham Forsyth back here on Coffee with Graham on Amateur Sports TV with junior hockey dots a writer and creator of Behind the Champ, Michelle Anderson. And before uh, we headed into the last commercial break that you guys did see, we we're talking about Michelle and her time writing for junior hockey dots. They talked about notes from a hockey mom, which is their series on junior hockey dots and talked about what, you know, she finds the joy in writing. We talked about, you know, the, the book that she's got coming up and we talked about her son's time at the collegiate level now in hockey and how proud she is of his son, of her son, sorry, of her son. But now we're going into our final part of the interview here where we talk about Behind the Champ. And Behind the Champ, you told me it wasn't something that you started off with, but something that, you know, you kind of introduced a bit later on. But what exactly is Behind the Champ, Michelle? It started as I wanted to make it a kind of a, a hockey birthday party supplies company um, and very quickly found out that it's very expensive to have things manufactured um, and have them imported. Um, so that didn't quite, didn't quite pan out. But since I was going to a lot of hockey tournaments and always buying my son shirts from the tournament, that's great. I usually live in hockey shirts or hoodies, um, but I didn't really want anything specific to a tournament or specific to a, a year. Um, and so I started creating my own t-shirts and sweatshirts and all kinds of other products. And those kind of go on behind the champ. But then I also have that website where I also put that writing on there as well. So one kind of sends traffic to the other. Nice. I mean, about the, you know, one is the merchandise and then one is the writing as well. Has that kind of helped the, the company grow behind the champ? Has that helped it a bit with all those coming together? A bit, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. And I was going to say, I heard your dog barking, and I guess when he heard behind the camp, I guess he got excited. Or it, it might be a girl. I'm not sure. I'm just going to assume it's a boy. But it's awesome that you have a dog. I have a dog as well. Uh, that's awesome. That's besides the point. But just going into how the writing is the writing on behind the camp different than your work on junior hockey? Not at this point, um, but I have plans to add more in there. I tend to focus more right now on junior hockey, um, but I think there, I have some ideas for expanding that into youth and talking about high school and those experiences as well, and also probably college um, once we get a little more, once that season gets rolling here pretty soon. Um, so I plan. On, I have plans to expand. I just haven't had time as of yet. That's great. Junior hockey is going to be more of the junior hockey stuff that you talk about, and then behind the champ is going to be, you know, more of the the youth hockey experiences as well as college and other things as well. I think that's awesome that you kind of get all the aspects of writing, even though they're not on the same site, but on two different sites with your name on it. That's awesome, Michelle. And we're going to go into a piece that you wrote about. And it's, if you're good, they'll find you. And it was the piece that my boss sent me and kind of got me curious about what Behind the Camp is and then what what you do for a living and finding out that you're a writer. It was awesome to know that, you know, you, you were able to put all these experiences out with your son, you know, playing hockey. So you, it's cool that you get to tell these stories from your sp perspective, but just going to get into this piece a bit. And some of my takeaways from it is that it's about the people, you know, and in your opinion, how big is that into, you know, building a resume for a hockey player if they want to get to that next level? I think it, I think it's very important for players to just get to know as many people, sorry, my dog bar hit the, 
laptop cart. I think it's important for hockey players to get to know as many other folks in hockey as possible. One, just because more friends is always more fun, um, but also because you never know where people are going to end up. Um, you know, maybe a coach doesn't have a use for a power forward this year, but next year he's coaching somewhere else. Well, maybe now he needs you in that spot and he might remember you. Um, so I think it's important to never burn a bridge and to get to know as many people as possible. Because the, you know, like I said, hockey is yeah. family and we all tend to help each other out. Yeah. 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 For yeah. Sure. And if you want to talk about how it's important not to burn those bridges, it kind of turns into, you know, the, the business aspect of things. And as fun as, you know, minor hockey is, at the end of the day, there's a lot of players that have a lot of aspirations to take their game to the next level. And definitely those relationships that they have with the people, with the coaches that they built up are so important in players, you know, maybe taking that next step. And I think that there's a lot of politics in the game of hockey that a lot of people, you know, know are there, but they don't acknowledge it. But there's definitely those politics in the game. And then you're talking about this kid in this piece and how he was, you know, this main player on the team, but then he ended up moving away and he found his perfect situation and boosted his game. There were people, coaches, players talking about how, how he such a superstar on their team, but how important in your opinion, obviously you wrote about it, but is it to find that perfect situation from a kid that, you know, maybe needed that confidence to develop? Right. And, you know, and even with the same kid that can change from year to year, I know there was, there were years in my son's youth hockey career where he would have benefited from being one of the top players on the team, but there were also quite a number of years where he really needed to be kind of middle of the pack or maybe down towards the bottom. So he had something to really go after and, and have that competition to push him forward. Um, you know, and, and a team's win loss record really, I don't think matters quite as much as, as the coach. And if that whole situation is really right for you and a fit, because if you're, if you're in somewhere, if you're playing somewhere and it's not a good fit, you're not going to be successful and, and nobody wins in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's great because the situation that people are put in is such a big part of why, you know, the kid is enjoying the sport because you could have be playing on a top team, you know, in the country, say, say you're playing on, uh, you know, the, the top team for your level in your city or province or your state or wherever you are but if the situation is toxic if the coaches aren't the best role models if the players aren't treating this player the best it's not gonna translate on ice i think building those relationships off ice is such a big thing and then another thing that i took away from the piece if you're good they'll find you is that the expectation for this certain individual could be, you know, too much to handle because he was being touted as that star player and he loved that recognition he was getting. But then once, you know, people start to watch him play, it was the, the pressure kind of got to him a bit. So what do you think about the expectation in minor hockey and just in all levels of hockey for kids that we put so many expectations on them? You think that sometimes we're being a bit unfair and unrealistic to these kids and we just got to let them go and let them play? I mean, sometimes I don't think there's a probably a kid out there that doesn't need to be pushed sometimes. Um, but you, it's a it can be a tough balance sometimes. I mean, you don't want to push them so hard that they want to quit. But you know, sometimes they just need to keep going too. They kids don't always have the life experience that we have, and so they maybe don't know that. Like, for example, with my son, there were a few times when he just maybe thought he was done with it. But my thing was I had something 
in high school that I was really, really good at and I didn't pursue it and I regretted it for a really long time. And I wanted him to take this as far as he could so that he didn't have any regrets. Um, you know, if, if he fails, he fails, but he tried. I mean, you didn't really fail if you keep trying. You really only fail if you don't try again. Yeah. And I think you, know, you talked about how some kids don't have this life experience that some people do have. And, you know, sometimes you, you don't know. You can't really go into a kid's mind and tell if they can live up to those expectations, but obviously you are right in the sense that you do got to push kids to a certain point for sure. Uh, just talking about how, you know, playing in bigger leagues too, you talked about in your piece how it can make it easier for scouts and, you know, colleges and schools to take some notice to that player uh and maybe in recruiting them so for you and your opinion do you think that playing in these big leagues is the answer to getting the kid to that next level and making them uh you know find that success at the next level or do you think that it's more about the the natural ability that if they are good enough they will find you i really uh, i mean you 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 need to be where you're going to be seen. Yeah. yeah. But, but you also have to have the skill too. Cause if you're playing, if you're on some hot, what is going on with my camera here? Um, I, if you're playing on a, if you're on the roster of some top team, but you're riding the pine, yeah, they're not really seeing you play anyway. So great. You have the kudos um for being on the roster on that team but if nobody ever gets to really see you play are you really gaining anything yeah i don't yeah. think so i mean yeah, you're really yeah. better off where you can play and develop the skills and i think a lot of parents get too hung up on that way too early um i mean puberty changes everything you know you get these yeah. you see these kids at, at a peewee well he's five six at a peewee well maybe when he's a u18 he's still five six you know yeah. i've seen it i've seen it go both ways i've seen average kids go on yeah. to make the show but they were av they just didn't they weren't like super great when they were 11 12 but i've also seen kids that oh that this guy's for sure going all the way and then you know, ride the pine in high school. Yeah. Yeah. You, you just don't know. Yeah. And you got to let them, yeah. let them try it. Yeah. And it's really more about playing that waiting game because like you said, there could be this kid who has all the talent at, you know, nine years old, but when he gets to that high skill level later on, he might not be that same player. And I think that also stems from the fact that there's a lot of these players that might have the skill but then they get lazy and they rely on that skill alone and then there's some kids that aren't as good and maybe they're putting in that extra work off ice to get better and then they finally hit their true potential as well right and hockey's such a late blooming sport yeah yeah for sure and just going back to that about playing in the big leagues i think you are right in the fact that you know obviously the eyes are going to be on you in these bigger leagues but obviously if you're not getting that same playing time as those top players when you're riding the pine it's going to be a lot harder for those scouts to really take you into consideration. So I think that's a great point that you made there. And just uh, if you guys want to check out Michelle's work on Behind the Champ, you can check it out on this website right here, behindthechamp.ca. We'll link it down here. It's on the ticker right there. You can check out all her great work. You can check out her pieces. Like if you're good, they'll find you and many more pieces that she does have 
on Behind the Champs. So, Michelle, so much fun talking to you today. So much fun getting into, you know, your process of how you write things about your experiences and how you use them to your advantage to, you know, writing some of the pieces that you have written. And I just want to wish your son the best of luck in his college career. And I know as mother, you're excited for the great things that his hockey career will bring him for the foreseeable future. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. You take care, Michelle. You too. Awesome. And that's going to do it for this edition of Coffee with Graham on Amateur Sports TV. I've been your host, Graham Forsyth, and joining me today was Michelle Anderson, creator and writer for BehindTheChamp.ca, and as well as she writes for JuniorHockey.ca. So if you want to check out more of Michelle's work, you can check her out at those two websites, and be sure to do that because there's some great content on there, and Michelle, a very good writer. And, you know, with all the experiences with she's had with her son in her years of watching him play hockey, and now he's going to the collegiate level, I'm sure she's even prouder and now just moving into the great shows we got here on the network other than Coffee with Graham which does air every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 30 a.m. here on the network so if you get sick of me you want to take a break from watching my show it's no worry we got you guys covered with all these other great shows on the network we got On the Ice with Theo Tuckaluck Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. for pro sports coverage we got Crunch Time with the boys weekdays at 9 p.m. for soccer coverage we got between the pipes with Mahith that airs on Wednesdays and then also watch for all our other new shows coming to the amateur sports tv network we got the new prospect show the rookie show world softball tv the sask sports show as well as the international hockey academy show so so many great options for you guys to pick and choose from to watch here on amateur sports tv you can check out all our shows on facebook and YouTube at Amateur Sports TV. And if you guys want to stay up to date on when our shows are coming out and when they're going to be released, you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well, where we'll be posting content like that. And that's going to do it for me today on Amateur Sports TV. I've been your host of Coffee with Graham, Graham Forsyth. And until next time, stay safe out there. Remember, grab your cup of joe, sit back, Enjoy the show and all the other shows here on Amateur Sports TV. Until next time, I'll see you then.